when 30 was old My biggest fear was September When he had to go A few cards and letters and one long distance call We drifted away like the leaves in the fall Strawberry Wine by Deanna Carter, released in 1996, off her album, Did I Shave My Legs for This? No, no one needs to shave their legs. <laughs> <laughs> I ask myself that all the time. I know. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Winter's coming. Oh, yeah. I know. I just did, I just shave my legs now, but because it's summery, but I think after that, <laughs> with all the shutdowns of COVID, too, what yeah. do we need to shave our legs for anyway? <laughs> The song tells the story of co-writers Berg's own coming of age as a teenager outside of Luck, Wisconsin. Berg recalled to AOL's The Boot, My dad is a farm boy from Inga and... Oh, what? Oh, never mind. I skipped a page. My, 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 it's really light, light spelling. <laughs> my dad is a farm boy from Wisconsin, and I, and I used to go up there and stay with my grandparents, Inga and Elmer Berg. Oh. And, I, yeah, and I met a boy up there. My grandma Berg just kept having babies, so my aunts were my age. So we used to run around and get in a lot of trouble together, chase boys and whatnot. I told Gary the story, and he latched right onto it. We wrote it quickly in about three or four hours. We really liked it, but we thought nobody else probably would. (laughs) Pat, uh, her publisher, um, was having this tent showcase with label people and artists coming to listen to the new stuff that we'd all written. And that was the only new song I had. I looked at the floor the whole time because I was so nervous. When I looked up after playing the song for him, he was grinning from ear to ear. Deanna Carter was there, and she was the only artist that showed up. Oh. She wanted the song for her first record. The song had made the rounds for a little while before she recorded it, and everybody passed on it, including Trisha Yearwood. 
They passed saying it was too long and controversial due to its reference to a teenage girl losing her virginity and apparently just not memorable enough. Which is not true, clearly. (laughs) Deanna Carter heard Berg perform the song at a showcase and decided to record it. And the rest was history, as we see. Deanna Carter was born in Nashville and is a daughter of country singer Fred Carter Jr. Her first big break came when one of her demo tapes caught Willie Nelson's attention and he invited her to take part in the 1994 Farm Aid concert as um, the show's only female soloist, which is nuts. <laughs> That's awesome getting the attention of Willie Nelson. Mm-hmm. That same tape led to a contract with Capitol Records later that year. And Carter has been a national spokesperson for the National Kidney Foundation, as her late father was a kidney uh, transplant recipient, which is really awesome too. Carter also was the author of a book, Songs from the Heart, and started her own record label called Little Nugget Records. (laughs) I love that name. (laughs) My dog's name is Nugget. (laughs) It was the craziest dog. It would run away all the time. And it got hit by a car. It didn't it didn't die, but I just remember my mom like stopping traffic in the middle of like of our street. I was like, oh God. Uh, anyway, so, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> yeah, good old little muggy records, <laughs> dead dogs, uh, <laughs> poor little puppies. Um, so you have some funny little things about the 1990 country scene. <laughs> this is some truth that only country music fans, 90s country music fans, will remember. Memorizing all the words to Goodbye Earl by the Dixie Chicks with your best friends. I remember that. <laughs> song. Yes. <laughs> Goodbye, Earl. <laughs> yeah. Slow dancing at your school dance to the song Amazed by Lone Star. Oh, yes. <laughs> Loving Billy Ray Cyrus's Achy Breaky Heart song. Almost as much as his mullet. <laughs> <laughs> his mullet was pretty badass. Yeah. Toby Keith and Vince Gill both had mullets. Oh, God. <laughs> They're coming back. <laughs> so the Tiger King had a mullet. That's true. It is kind of coming back. It's a little trendy now. It is. Yeah, I've seen a few people, like, yeah, as a trend. And it kind of looks, it's like hipster. Yeah, now. it can look <laughs> good if you do it right. I agree. I agree. Um. Being in shock after discovering the words to what Reba McIntyre's song Fancy was about. <laughs> oh, I wonder what it was about. <laughs> it's about a mom who turns her daughter into a prostitute to make money for the family. <gasps> oh. <laughs> yeah. <don't> uh, prostitutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever you have to do. <laughs> Taking out the album booklet to memorize all the song lyrics. That's very true. That is so true. Watching Shania Twain's That Don't Impress Me Much music video and wanting to change your whole wardrobe to cheetah print. Oh, yeah, that's true, too. She looks that so good in that music video. I know. Her, like, her lip color and her skin against, like, it was just, like, so, it was so striking. <laughs> Having a love-hate relationship with the song Chattahoochee by Alan Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I still don't like that song. <laughs> and to... Um, transition us into our next artist, hoping Ooh. that one day you'd have a relationship as beautiful as Tim McGraw's and Faith Hill's. That's true. It is pretty beautiful, mm-hmm. and like they're really that was that's a neat um, that's a good su- uh, success story for sure. And yeah. their daughter is uh, I think her name's Grace or Gracie, but yeah, Gracie. She's a singer too, mm-hmm. and I love how her and her dad like sang together, like. <laughs> At some of his concerts, so well. Thanks. Where did you? Uh, where can you see these? This list. This was on BuzzFeed. Ooh, good old BuzzFeed. Well, thanks, Buzz, BuzzFeed. <laughs> so, speaking okay. of Tim McGraw and Faith Hill, yes. Up next, we have "It's Your Love" by Tim McGraw and Faith Hill <laughs> on <Yeah>. his <laughs> fourth studio album, "Everywhere." Nineties <laughs> and today's country music. Power couple, <laughs> they are, and it's true. And they both just look so good. Like they yeah. have also aged really nicely. <laughs> <laughs> 
And um, it was released in uh, 1997. It was written by Stephanie Smith. The song spent six weeks on top of uh, Billboard's Hot Country Songs chart and was both McGraw's and Hill's first top 10 hit on the Billboard Hot 100, which is kind of neat that they got to do that together. <laughs> The song went on to win song, single, video, and vocal event of the year at the ACMs, um, won vocal event of the year at the CMAs, and was nominated for two Grammys. Tim and Faith were dating at the time, and when he first heard the song, which wasn't intended as a duet, he knew he wanted to record it with her, which how nice, how chivalrous. (laughs) And now look at them. Faith Hill was Tim's opening act on his spontaneous combustion tour in 1996. And sparks were flying. They were combusting. <laughs> so, there you go. There were sparks. Uh, they were spontaneously combusting. <laughs> and the pair began dating. Uh, the video for the song raised some questions as it showed a very a pregnant Faith Hill. A lot of combusting. <laughs> <Apparently>. <laughs> the couple had only been married for less than seven months when the song came out. But the, the time they filmed the video, Hill was very pregnant with their first child, um, Gracie. This song was the first of many collaborations they would go on to do together. They've been married for 24 years now and have three beautiful daughters. Tim has released 15 albums and 10 of those albums went to number one, which is so crazy. And Faith herself has sold more than 40 million albums worldwide. And Tim has sold over 80. (laughs) So I guess he's probably like, well... I wonder, I guess he's part of like really close to the top five, I would think. Yeah, he's only up there. Yeah, because if Garth Brooks is 134, well, Alan Jackson at 75. So, oh, they do sell a lot of records. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Something you may or may not know about Faith Hill is that she is adopted, which I had no idea. Wow. She was adopted days after being born into a loving home and foster care is, um, is an issue she actually wants to address more. And that is good, especially being from being adopted. That would be nice uh, to kind of carry on and bring attention to. Mm -hmm. Um, She also auditioned for Reba's band, but was told she wasn't good enough. (laughs) My God. I just love seeing that happen where it's like, well, screw you. I'm going to be a hit star anyway. (laughs) Paula K. Evans got the gig instead and was one of the eight people who died in the plane crash, which that's terrible. Yeah. Oh that, my God. That crash that uh, Reba's band. What? I don't remember. remember that. Yeah. And Reba wasn't in there. No, it was her, like most of her band. Isn't that crazy, eh? Yeah. Wow. So they went on separate flights? Yeah, it was like a private plane. I don't know. Jeez. Oh my goodness. I didn't, I have to look at that. I totally don't remember that. But on a lighter note, <laughs> McGraw's hat collection has been well documented, and he admits the reason for all the hats saying, I don't have a forehead, I have a five head. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So here is It's Your Love by Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. Dancing in the dark, middle of the night, taking your heart and holding it tight. Emotional touch, touching my skin, and asking you to do what you've been doing all over again. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Don't think I can keep it all in I just gotta let you know What it is that won't let me go It's your love It just does something to me It sends a shock right through 